Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com. If you want to learn about the double bass, if you're already on your journey and you want some new information, or if you're a beginner, please go and check the website out. We've got a lot of uh, lessons and courses to help you improve your playing. And today I'm joined by one of our classical tutors. It's the fantastic Jason Heath. So welcome, Jason. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. It's been a great week working with you and everybody on the Discover Double Bass team. So thanks a lot. Well, it's been our pleasure hearing uh, you teach the fundamentals of classical bass playing, which is what we've really been exploring this week. And one of the things which is just essential is getting a good sound with the bow. So I was hoping that maybe you could just give us some kind of quick and easy tips to really help uh, people who are new to the bow just get a nice core sound that's good to listen to and hopefully doesn't have too many squeaks and scratches. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge for sure. It's one of the major pain points of playing bass. And I mean, if we just look at how thick these strings are, I mean, they're like bridge cables. So just trying to figure out how to get these to vibrate in a way that's pleasant is, is the, the big challenge. Uh, and I love to think of pizzicata when I think of tone production with the bow. If I'm going to pitch the D string, I'm going to put my finger on the string and I'm going, I'm going to engage that string and then let it go. You'd never see me just thwomping at the string like that. I'm always going to have a connection and then release. And that's such a critical concept for bowing. I love the exercise and I encourage it, and I do this a little bit myself every day. I put the bow on the string and I make sure I've got the string with the bow. And you can even wiggle it around like this. And you wanna actually pull the string just like I did with pizzicato. Pull the string with the bow and then release. Catch. Release, catch, release. Practice that 30 seconds a day and you're going to do wonders for your sound. And now after you release, the second big thing that I see derailing people is they release and then their bow sails off into the sunset crooked. And it's such an easy thing to do and it's hard to tell from the player perspective what is a straight bow. But if we're not straight, if we're not perpendicular to the string, if we're not parallel to the bridge, we're not gonna get a good sound. The bow is going to slide around, it's not gonna engage, right? So what you've gotta do is just put yourself in front of a mirror and look and understand what a straight bow looks like and more importantly, what a straight bow feels like. Because it's very tricky to tell from the player perspective. Yeah, that's the difficulty isn't it that you're obviously mm -hmm. perpendicular to the string mm -hmm. but that's not parallel with the ground because of the angle that the base is on and from the player's position it can be quite difficult and especially as you're moving through the uh, uh, the range of the bow and you're having to uh, uh, adapt and move your arm to accommodate that um, and you were talking earlier about in the course about moving through water I think with some of the examples that you were using in terms of how you use your arm yeah, I love thinking about if I was in liquid playing my yeah. bass. Not that I would, hopefully that wouldn't be happening in real life. But if you just think about if you're in the pool uh, and how you move your arm, if you can just sort of imagine that you're moving through liquid when you're playing, that's a really healthy way to think about the bow arm. Well, you mentioned earlier throwing a Frisbee as well. Yeah, if you think about throwing a Frisbee, and, and you could apply this to lots of things, but I love the Frisbee analogy because it's actually fairly similar to a bow. If you took the Frisbee and you threw it, what moves first? It's not the hand, it's the body, it's the torso, and the arm actually is the follow through. Yeah. And it's totally true for bowing. I put here, and the, the first thing that goes is my back and my shoulders. My arm is actually the finishing stroke. It's the follow through. Uh, I, anyone who wants to get better at bowing, pick up a Frisbee and throw a Frisbee, go play bass. I'm not kidding. It's unbelievably similar. And by the way, the way that you hold a Frisbee with, you hold it too tight, it doesn't leave your hand. You hold it too loose, it flops on the ground. You have to find that middle ground where you've got it, but you're, you're able to let it go. That is how you should think about your bow hand. Too tight, nothing happens. Too loose, you drop the bow. So you have to find that, that medium ground where you can feel the vibrations of the string in the bow. You've engaged the bow, you're carrying the bow, you're not choking the sound. It's a, it's a lot to think about, but, but if you can think about catching the string, releasing it, and sailing in a straight line, you're gonna go so far with your bowing. 
Well, Jason, thank you so much for joining us there. That's really practical, useful advice, and I love all the thoughts about playing frisbee. So I'm going to enjoy <laughs> enjoy playing frisbee when I next get the chance. It's good to know that it might be helping our bass playing. And uh, thank you so much for joining us at home. If you want to learn more from Jason, he's filmed a series of lessons and courses for Discover Double Bass, all about the foundations, the fundamentals of classical double bass playing. So, Jason, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>